Hi, I'm Anna. In March of 2022, I decided to leave Vancouver after almost 10 years of calling the West Coast home in search of a more fulfilling life. Join me as I start my journey traveling through Europe as a digital nomad, discovering new places, living out my foodie dreams, while doing it all on my own. Well, not totally on my own, I have this camera and you watching, so grab a cup of coffee, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let's catch up on last week's vlog. I traveled by train from Madrid to Valencia. Checked into my new six person dorm room hostel during a street art tour that was for free, but not actually for free because I had to give a tip at the end. Where I made new friends, joined them for a glass of Agua de Valencia, and we made plans to meet up the next day. Hey friends, this episode of my travel vlogs is going to be a little bit different. I spent the day in Valencia with two new friends. Hola! Hola! Meet Indra from Belgium and Ricardo from USA. Uh. <laughs> we joined together to rent bikes for the day to explore Valencia, basically in like less than eight hours. We knew everything was quite close together, so we decided renting bikes was the best way to be outside enjoy one another's company and also we met on the street art tour from the day before so if you haven't watched that vlog go up here and watch it that's how we met each other through our hostel although Ricardo was actually staying in a different hostel but Indra and I were both staying at the Rivers Hostel in Valencia We are at Torres del Sanres. That's not how you say it though. Can you pronounce it for us, Ricardo? I can say it in Spanish. Oh. Don't turn around, it's too dark. <laughs> and he will pronounce where we are. Torre de Serranos. Gracias. <laughs> Here's a little insight to what the Serrano Towers are. Facing the bridge that bears the same name, the Serrano's Towers are one of the most representative monuments of Valencia and are a reminder the walled nature of the city in the Christian medieval period. They were built by the master Pierre Balaguer, apologies for pronunciation, between 1392 and 1398, which my Canadian history brain cannot comprehend, and constituted the northern gateway for all those coming to the city on the main road that connected Valencia with Aragon and Catalonia. Nowadays and every year at the end of February, this is a place where the Falera mayor calls upon all Valencians to begin the Fallas festivals and invites all outsiders to join. The bridge, the towers, the way you can see the river, the wall surrounding it kind of gives a nice outline to the city, but definitely a monument for sure based on when it was built and how incredibly the architecture has just stayed in place. Must see, and it's free. You do have to give your name and email, I believe it was, for data co collection at the front door. This is where the music is uh, playing over. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we've got a bridge right here and along here is a park now that's about 15 kilometers, but it used to be the riverway and it seemed that the water was overflowing so they closed off the water and it no longer flows. It's a little bit hard to see that that is a bridge and that this monument reminds us of the Christian medieval period when the city was blocked off from the rest and it kind of created a barrier for the rest of this beautiful city.
discovered here a playground for kids. On this far side, there is a head and it's a body. So we've got the hands, the slide, and the leg. Maybe it was a water park? I think it was a water park at one point. Upon editing this video, I did confirm that this was a park, but it wasn't a water park. This is actually called Gulliver Park. It's based on the late 17th century protagonist of Jonathan Swift's novels where he wrote about mystical and magical lands. And Gulliver is actually one of the giants in the land of Lilliput. And the humans, the people, the children that play on this park are supposed to symbolize the tiny people of the land of Lilliput. It's been around for over 31 years and has only closed its doors in 2020 and 2021 due to the pandemic. And during that time, it seemed that Gulliver needs some repairs. So during my visit to Valencia, the park was closed, but it should open after it has some repairs to make sure that the slides and the playground is enjoyable. We just stopped riding our bikes because we are trying to get to the Building of Arts and Science. It looks super cool though. Cool science, different exhibitions. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should do that. Do you want to go inside the museum? Welcome to oh, our bike crew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go explore the building. The building. Chill. Yeah, Ciudad de la Arte. How do you say science there? Ciencias? Ciencias. Ciudad, Ciudad. Oh, that's in Valencia. Oh. Okay, I'll be good and walk my bike now. Which way, left or right? Let's go left. Some of these uh, buildings remind us of like a spaceship cruise ship, just something different. We've got, this is the arts building. Side plankers. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wow, we've been biking all day. We biked all the way to Caracona Beach and had a vegan or a vegetarian paella, which was so good, and sangria. Got helmet head. We're now back in the city center. I'm gonna find a cafe. I really need to do laundry badly, so we're gonna try and do that at the hostel. And then we're gonna have some dinner.
It's just a working from the computer day. Yesterday was an amazing day exploring Valencia. I feel like I've almost seen everything that would be on a tourist bucket list. So I'm really happy to have found this vegan cafe as a recommendation from a German girl who was in the same room as me. And so far, I'm really happy and hungry and tired. <laughs> Got some avocado toast, seeds, tomato on a nice sprouted And finally, a latte with oat milk. And some of my new friends are also going to join in the cafe to work and read and just enjoy ourselves. The rest of this day, it torrentially poured in Valencia. opposite to the day we had before which was sunny and beautiful while cycling. I ended up staying most of the day inside of our hostel. The only downside, while I was visiting, there was a large Dutch school group also visiting and they basically took up all the hangout spaces, especially during breakfast time. And I'm all for some education, but uh, it left for a digital nomad to kind of just end up working in her bed for the day. Hello friends, it has been about a day and a half since I last chatted with you and currently we are sitting in the park called Antique Tram Fluvial da Ria Turia. Anyway, it's about a 15 kilometer long park that used to have water in it and I suppose the water was overflowing so they pushed the water all back out to the ocean or other water sources and now it is a beautiful park with jogging paths. Um, there's lots of cyclists, there's dogs, and the birds are chirping. Yesterday was an absolute day. It was just pouring all day, so I ended up staying at a cafe for about five hours, which I will link below because that cafe was so good. And today we spent the morning working for about an hour since we got woken up by an alarm in the building and then the jackhammer that continued to do construction outside. So we got up early, did about an hour's worth of work. Um, I had bought a yogurt last night and some leftover granola I still have. And today we're just kind of wasting time purposely until I take a train from Valencia to Barcelona. Compared to Madrid, I am enjoying Valencia more. However, I've spent less time here. So I can't really give you the full inside scoop and I only stayed in the hostel versus any kind of house here as well. But I just think it's a little bit more spacious, quiet. At nighttime, it's definitely wrapped up quicker. Like restaurants are closing at midnight or even earlier versus 1 or 2 a.m. in Madrid. And it just feels more peaceful and green. But if you like city life, I think Madrid is the hopping place to be. So we're going to enjoy ourselves here and catch my train. when it was built and how incredible the architecture has been when it was built and incredibly how the architect Gulliver Park, Gulliver 